Now, this incident comes just as a new study is published by Tel Aviv University claiming that more than 70% of Israel's coronavirus patients were infected by a strain that originated in the United States. To tell us more, we're joined by Dr. Adi Stern from the School of Molecular Cell Biology and Biotechnology at Tel Aviv University's George S. Weiss Faculty of Life Sciences. Thank you so much for being with us today. Now, how did you determine where the virus came from? How did you determine that the United States was the culprit? So we sequenced um, over 200 genomes um, of, uh, of the virus, um, again, from, from more than 200 infected patients in Israel that represent a, a random sample of um, all infected cases. And we compared the genome sequence of the Israeli patients to um, uh, over 4,700 4, genome sequences across the world. And we found a very high degree of similarity between sequences in Israel and sequences um, in the United States. And in fact, what we could determine is that 70% of the transmission chains in Israel um, were derived from, from um, um, travelers who had returned from the United States and entered Israel. All right, well, now flights into Israel from the United States were stopped within days and weeks after the borders were closed to Europe and other countries. How did this influence the, the figures that your study is presenting? Yeah, so, so, so the, that, that was one of the key points that we actually realized when, when we looked at the data and saw the 70% um, of transmission strains that are, again, based on our sequencing data. We compared this to the incoming reports of infected travelers, and we saw that only 27% of infected travelers had returned from the United States. Um, and we think that this discrepancy in these two numbers, 27% versus 70%, tells us that people that returned from the U.S. Um, contributed more to spread as compared to European travelers. And this has to do with a gap in policy. So the borders with the, um, with the U.S. And were closed uh, a few days after the borders um, were closed from Europe. And so these few days allowed people that returned from the U.S. and who were presumably sick to uh, travel in Israel, meet uh, friends, relatives, and to spread the virus. Um, and so in Europe, it seemed that um, the quarantine measures uh, worked. We see very few transmission chains that originate in Europe, um, but in the U.S. we see these, these, this large number of transmission chains in Israel. All right. Now, we know that a second wave uh, has historically been a sure thing when easing restrictions too soon during a pandemic. How do we take your research and research like it and apply it sensibly to protect the people from, you know, with the least amount of damage to the economy, uh, country, et cetera? Yeah, so I think that first of all, what we learned from our from our study is that um, um, closing the borders effectively and on time works, and that and that that's what we see from the European cases, right? And and from Southeast Asia, so we see very very few to no uh, transmission chains from Southeast Asia and and a few from Europe, which shows us that. Um, closing the borders on time is a really, really critical measure. And, and looking forward, I think that's that's probably um, uh, maybe the most important take-home message from our study. The second thing that we actually see is that we see that um, the lockdown measures were very effective in Israel. And, and I think that um, by understanding even better um, um, how these transmission chains occur, we can actually try and, and maybe enforce restriction measures that are, 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 are more localized. And so what we're now starting to study is um, where the largest outbreaks occur um, and, and how we could perhaps enforce um, right, these restriction measures in a, very, in, in a localized manner and not across the entire country. So, so given what you know about Israel's restrictions and, and its actions up until now, how likely do you think a second wave is in Israel? Um, so, well, I was one of the pessimistic ones that actually thought that we might be in a second wave already now. Uh, I think Israel is a very, very closely knit community where, with a lot of social interactions, which create a lot of potential for viral spread. Um, I'm happy that this hasn't right, um, come, come through. Um, but I think it really is extremely important to, to, to continue um, adhering to the regulations that, that are put forth by the Ministry of Health and to, and to really make a, make a huge effort to prevent um, um, a second wave. All right. Dr. Sharon, thank you so much for, for your time. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thank you.